Hi fam, how's everybody doing? Just uh, here. Today we're talking about some of your parents' favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan. Yeah, that's all our terms right there. We got a bunch, we're gonna try to cram it all into our nice little you know, 20, 30 minute spiel that we normally do and uh, life's gonna be good. Um, yeah, so go get your parents. I'll, I'll keep coming back to this. We'll start off. Um, you know, with, with with a runaway election, we'll we'll talk a little bit about domestic stuff that's going on, uh, specifically with women. Um, then we'll get into uh, some some heavy stuff with with economics. All right, um, and then we'll finish up with with a little scandals, a little Cold War action. You know, the 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 good stuff. Um, give everybody an update. That's a quarantine beard so far. It's not really going up here, so. Figured I just look really dope in a hat and a cool shirt, and <laughs> there's nobody cooler than Teddy riding the moose. So let's roll. Mm. So um, yeah, man, let's uh, let's get started again with this with this election right here, election of of 1980. Um, Jimmy Carter, man, Jimmy Carter. You know, we talked about he, he's getting blamed for everything. Um, is it necessarily anything his fault no you know quick recap um of of jimmy just because poor guy you know there were all his issues there Let's see if we can't slide this a little bit more yeah there are his issues there um you know we talked about all the things going on in the middle east there we talked about the the camp david accords and how he gets a nobel peace prize it's really kind of the boom feather in his cap but but outside of that um it's gonna be struggle bus for jimmy we talked about the the stagflation remember our stagflation here um, is is our normal recession we've seen these things before but it's also being accompanied by inflation and and jimmy carter's basically telling people yo put on a sweater um in the midst of that we've also got a an energy crisis opec's being well they're not really happy with us and so they're they're, they're making life uncomfortable for us um and of course everybody's blaming jimmy for it um then you got the iranian revolution remember our dude the shah got toppled um and and they took a bunch of hostages after after uh the shah showed up in the u.s and we weren't going to give them back um we talked about that that, that hostage crisis and all the, the the fun little details we talked about the covert ops the types of diplomacy and how in the very end really i mean it took ronald reagan there getting getting elected here shortly in 1980 to uh yeah, Jimmy, if you're watching this, if you're watching this right here, Jimmy, I can forgive you for everything. This, we were ready to stack skulls. The wrestlers of America were ready to stack skulls, and you messed up, Jimmy. But you're a fine former president. Um, and then we talked about the kind of the downfall of, of the Soviet Union. And this, you know, what I want you guys to understand is that as we go through all of what we're hitting today... Um, Afghanistan was the Soviet Union's Vietnam, um, you know, and, and and they're in there for ten years. Long wars hurt economies, um, and 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 so between this and the other types of spending uh, that we're going to get the Soviet Union to participate. Uh, uh, against us in in these varying different races that we've got going on through the Cold War. Um, you know, this is, is going to be big for bringing the economic downfall of, of the Soviet Union. So let's get into the election. Okay. Election in 1980, you've got Jimmy Carter, uh, versus Ronald Reagan. Um, and, and man, Ronald Reagan is, is promising the world. Um, you know, he's going to fix everything and, and man, Jimmy Carter, he's, Still telling us, yo, I'm I'm trying to keep it real with you people. Um, he says he's he's tested, he's trustworthy. Uh, he's kind of making the argument that everything's falling apart on him, and it's not necessarily his fault. But man, Ronald Reagan, he's he's an incredible speech giver. Um, no, he's yeah, we've seen him. Uh, remember, Reagan was the uh, president of the Screen Actors Guild way back in the uh, in the HUAC days. So you know, now he's making a run. Um, he, going into 1980, he had been the governor of California. We saw him in the uh, 76 election, um, almost defeating Ford. Um, but we take a look at this this election, and, and man, you know, this is more of a vote against Jimmy Carter 
then it really is a vote for Ronald Reagan. Um, you can see, I mean, Jimmy's going to win Georgia, you know, because he's our hometown hero. Uh, Mondale was from Minnesota, so that explains that. And then all that stuff around, you know, what is that, West Virginia and Maryland? Cool. Um, Reagan's your president. Okay. Reagan's your president, um, and, and we can see all the stuff that, that he's got to deal with. Um, even though he's going to be a two-term president, uh, I just threw it all in there as one. Um, now we've got, you're going to see foreign policy. We've got salt stuff, um, more strategic arms limitation talks. Um, we'll get to that. We'll talk Iran Contra. We'll talk SDI, but I want to start off with the domestic stuff first, uh, because that's going to be the most sweeping changes that we have is, is the economic changes that we have, but also a lot of social rollbacks. Um, you know, we, we had gone, you know, we talk about that pendulum swinging back and forth, uh, in, in history from, from these great periods of liber liberalism to these great periods of conservatism. And, and really what we saw from FDR all the way to LBJ was that pendulum was, took a long, slow sweep into, to the, uh, liberal side. Um, and so it's going to swing back. You know, we, we, we saw the beginnings of it with, with Rockefeller back in, not Rockefeller, uh, Goldwater, Goldwater back in the day, uh, we saw Nixon, um, and, and, you know, they're running strong. Um, but then Nixon lost trust in, in the American people. Um, and, and so, you know, it took Jimmy to bring Reagan in. All right. Anyway, let's get into some of this stuff. Um, so we've got... Bloop, bloop. There we go. We've got the election taken care of. Uh, let's start with the social rollbacks. Okay, the social rollbacks um, and, and 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 the person. Oh man, person I want to talk about is Phyllis Schlafly. All right. Um, yo, you know we can see it right there. CCOT on women. Uh, women have had a had a interesting run um, throughout us history. Um, you know, just really in, in the 1900s, what we're looking at here, um, women came in and didn't even have voting rights, uh, at the turn of the century. Um, 19, what's called 1919, 1920, you get, um, the, 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 the 19th amendment, you get the, the roaring twenties that brings in this ideal of the new woman. Then in the thirties and forties, you kind of see this, oh, let's, you know, kind of, go back to a more conservative look um, that that pushed into that that cult of domesticity in the 50s um, and, and and then you know you had the women's lib movement um, of, of of the 60s and 70s with with Roe v Wade with with uh, a, a big push for equal rights amendments okay um, what you got to understand is, 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 is all women aren't livers, man. Um, you know, you've got this woman, um, Phyllis here. Uh, that's her right here, by the way, there's Phyllis. Um, she was really, you know, the leader of, of, of the conservative woman. You know, we talked about Betty Friedan being the leader of, of, you know, essentially third wave liberalism. Uh, you've got uh, Schlafly here, who, who is leading women, um, kind of back in that cult of domesticity. Um, she was outspoken against, um, you know, she, she was clearly against Roe v. Wade. We see that she's against an equal rights amendment. Um, and you can, you know, zoom in here and, you know, hit pause, zoom in at, at these signs and you can see some of the fears, um, especially in the context of what's happening here in the late seventies, early eighties, uh, that, 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 that Schlafly's gonna, gonna really run, um, her agenda on. Okay. Um, this really is going to start, you know, we, we talked about swinging that pendulum back into the conservative side. This is, is women, conservative women jumping on board and, and finding political, uh, identity. Okay. Um, you know, and so, you know, we've got tremendous amounts of CCOT all the way from, from way back in the way back cult of domesticity, like Republican motherhood stuff. We've got compare and contrast, uh, from, from, you know, the, 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 the women of the sixties, we got a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, especially for an LEQ, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if maybe you saw something with, with social movements and, and with women. Let's hope that the, um, the Olympics.
down. Well, this is Freestyle World Cup, but I'm still, you know, this is a great opportunity. That kind of looks like the coronavirus, doesn't it? That's weird, man. That's all kinds of weird. Pardon me while I sit out and listen to the birds and... Yeah. Anyway, let's keep rolling. Okay, so... We knocked out Phyllis, we knocked out the election. Next thing, uh, supply side economics, okay? Uh, this is really what Reagan gets a tremendous amount of credit for. Um, and, and, and honestly, it's, it's, it's the perfect time to make a change, okay? It's the perfect time to make a change. Um, and, and what I mean is, is Reagan comes in, okay, 1980, the economy started to tank in about 74, 75. Remember, 74, 75, you know, we start to see inflation going through the roof. Um, we start to see stagflation starting to take root, 74, 75. And remember, how long do these things, uh, these economic downturns last for? Four to six years. Remember, it's four to six years. Um, if, if we're going to, to credit that with starting around 74, 75, then 80, 81 is right when the economy should be turning. That's the perfect time to put in a new economic system. Okay. Um, what Reagan is, is, is going to introduce is again, what's known as supply side economics. Now supply side economics has a lot of different names. You get supply side, you get trickle down, um, you, supply side economics, trickle down ec economics and Reaganomics. If I use those words interchangeably, that's well, because those words are, are interchangeable. All right. The idea behind supply side economics is that economic growth can be most effectively created by lowering the barriers for the people who produce. Again, we can create the most growth, you know, effective growth, if we lower barriers for people who produce, right? The people who produce are on the supply side of the economy, hence supply side economics, all right? So growth can be most effectively created by lowering barriers for people who produce goods and services, the supply, okay? Now, the thought of it is if you help the people at the top, the people who are on the supply side of the economy, those who are providing goods and services, if you loosen up the restrictions or the barriers on them, then they will, in theory, spend more money. That money will then trickle down. Okay. Now that's the thought. Let's take a deeper dive into supply side. Okay. Um, kind of pop in here um at any time you know hit pause please zoom in on this stuff um you can also check it out i'm gonna drop these these uh powerpoints on itzel so so you guys can check it there um but four major pillars okay four major pillars of supply side economics the very first one is reduce government spending all right that was a big push by the conservatives uh they wanted to reduce government spending um they felt that the government was spending way too much in in its efforts to create a great society and we talked about all those social programs um back with with lbj all right um and so again you know they want to reduce government spending Right, which is going to be rolling back on a lot of, of social stuff, but we'll get there. Um, another thing, a reduction in taxes. Second pillar is a reduction in taxes. Okay, You're, um, And when we look at a reduction in taxes, I really want to focus on income tax and capital gains taxes. All right? Capital gains taxes are, are made from investments. All right? If, if, you know you get word that somebody, um, or, or that there's gonna be a major stock sell-off because of the coronavirus, and, and you sell off all your stuff and make a huge profit, one, it's kind of illegal, that's insider trading. But two, all that money you just made um, are what are known as capital gains, all right? So think of capital gains as anything you make from an investment, all right? If you're selling something for profit, profit Boom, that's a capital gain. Uh, the other is income tax, and anybody who's got a job loads the income tax. But we got it. Um, third thing is, is to uh, 
what does that say? Reduce government regulation. Okay, we're going to reduce government regulation. We are going to deregulate a lot of industries. Um, and and in terms of, of CCOT, man, this stuff's rich. Uh, this stuff's rich because we're coming from Keynesian economics, all right? And Keynesian economics, if we take a look right over here, um, this is the Keynesian economic model. Uh, you can see that there's a, a tremendous amount of, of, of government interaction. Uh, you know, the idea here, I'm going to pop around here. All right. So the idea here with Keynesian, Roosevelt, FDR is going to bring in Keynesian economics um, because if we think about when Roosevelt came in, man, the economy was tanking. OK, um, we've got we've got a recession. We've got a depression. We've got we've got all kinds of problems. And so, you know, we are tanking in this Great Depression. When Roosevelt came in, he brought Keynesian economics. OK, and the idea is that with high government interference, the government starts coming in and regulating things. If we think about most of the New Deal, it was for relief, uh, reform or recovery. You know, this fits in. So the government's getting involved and and keeping our standard of living from from plummeting. OK, and so, again, this is high government intervention. Remember, that was the end of, of, of the true end of our laissez faire economy. When Reagan comes in, he's going to bring in supply side. OK, and supply side has low government interference. And the argument here was that our economy with high interference, this Keynesian model, had basically plateaued. We had 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 become a stagnant economy. And so by having low government interference, by rolling back a lot of the regulations that we had back here with with FDR, it will allow the supply side of the economy to grow. Thus, everything trickling down. All right. So that is what we're looking at. Okay, and that's that's your your, your quick and dirty rundown on on supply side economics. Now, um, again, man, I I would argue that it doesn't matter if if you're supply side, if you're Keynesian, if you're um, uh, what's what's hands off? Yeah, laissez faire. We're still going to have these economic downturns every twenty years, um, and and so you know again, it's a brilliant time to to make the change because if it started in seventy four seventy five, we're ready to take off. Um, so let's take a look at the effects of Reaganomics. Okay, um, you know with these. First off, with this, if you're not looking at this on, on ITSL and you're just watching this video, hit pause, zoom in, take a look. Some of the things that I want you guys to do is 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 you're really going to have to put on your blinders, okay? Because what we're looking at here is, is economic growth. Um, really, we're looking at GDP and inflation. That's what we're looking at here. Um, but we've got, you know, a huge time span. But you've got to put on your blinders and only look at 1980 to 88 that's that's going to be your Reagan years. Um, and, and we can see, you know, by doing all of this, uh, we're going to see inflation is going to decrease. Um, the way that they're going to get the inflation uh, to go down is is by cranking up the the uh, interest rates. OK, um, remember back in in what the start of the war in 20s, we talked about, you know, manipulating the rediscount rate. That's kind of what they're doing here. All right. Um, and, and, and so they're going to have higher interest rates. Inflation is going to fall. Um, when Reagan came in, inflation was somewhere around 13 and a half percent. It's going to fall to 4.1 percent by 1988. Um, the other thing we're going to see here is is GDP is going to go up. All right. And if you take a look, when when you have higher GDP than you have inflation, man, that is economic good times right there. OK, that's really, really good. Um, now, what happens after Reagan leaves? Yeah, I mean, the, the inflation starts to get out of control again um, and 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 the GDP starts to fall. But again, if we're taking a look right about here, when it starts to tank, we're right at, at the next 
the next turn. Um, remember, last economic downturn was 74, 75. That's when it started. And, and so the next one should hit us around 94, 95. Um, and we can see it was well on its way. But we'll talk about why it wasn't, you know, something major and catastrophic. Um, it's a dot-com boom. It's what you're on right now. Um, hi. Katie's waving at me from the window. He's itching to be to be YouTube famous. That's right. It's called this one. That's why it won't come out. So, um, other things to kind of look at here. Um, reduction in taxes. Remember that was that second pillar of of Reaganomics. Okay. Um, and 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 again, put your blinders on and only look at at 80 to 88 there. Um, but you can see, you know, in terms of a reduction of taxes, taxes went down across the board. Okay. They went down across the board, uh, for, for all five quintiles, um, looking at that stuff. Um, unemployment's going to go back. Um, other things that we can take a look at is, is, you know, poverty. Um, you know, it's kind of one of the the, the 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 sketchy things about supply side. Um, yes, the economy improves. Yes, uh, the uh, inflation goes down, unemployment goes down. All these things are exactly what you want to happen. Um, but poverty levels are also going to increase. Okay, um, poverty levels are going to increase um, across the board. And I'm gonna pop back around here so I can point and look and manipulate and do all that fun stuff. But again, if we're looking at, at, at our Reagan years are from 1980, we'll call it the 1990. Um, you know, we can see a, uh, you know, a tremendous growth. Okay. A tremendous growth across the board in, in, in under 18, over 65 and, and your mid range folks here, everybody's, you know, poverty rates are going to go up, um, in there. Um, you know, but one of the things I want you to take a look at is, is, you know, the seventies. Okay. You know, coming out of the sixties and into the seventies, poverty rates were significantly declining. Why? Mm-hmm. You know, the great society initiatives were, were working, you know, we're fighting a war on poverty and it was having some positive effects. Um, you know, as indicated by, by, you know, the census bureau, uh, graph here. Um, and, and, and what we've got here with, with, with everybody else, um, well, number one, 65 and under is going to continue to trend down. Um, and that's going to be big for your 65, uh, and older. And, and there's a reason why one, the 65 year olds that are, are retiring at this point are now pulling social security. Okay. And so that'll be big to help kind of, uh, keep that burden, but also old folks are cashing in. Okay, they're cashing in on 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 investments so that they can retire. And so, what we're going to see is for old people, um, poverty rates are 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 going to decline significantly in the Reagan years. Um, and that's definitely going to keep uh, the, the the old folks voting voting conservative for a long, long time. All right, uh, but under eighteen is going to go up, um, and really eighteen to to. 64 is, is, is going to definitely increase, um, in our, in our time, uh, range there now. Um, but overall, yeah, um, it did its job. You know, the economy, uh, resurged, um, and, and life was good. Um, and, and, and we can see the growth, you know, our top 5% here. Um, and again, this it really makes up most of the supply side of the economy. And so we're re removing a bunch of those barriers for them. They're able to spend money and it's supposed to trickle down. Um, we can see, again, here's 80 right here. That's kind of where we're looking at uh, here. You know, since we've been in this supply side economic period, you can see that, you know, top 5% of, of, of Americans are doing incredible. Okay. You know, the growth rate has been exponential. Um, those that are in the fifth quintile have, have seen, you know, moderate gains over here. Uh, fourth quintile, very, I mean, a little bit, but below the fourth, it's, it's almost, it's almost the same as, as before. Um, now one of the things I want you to kind of look at here is, is, you know, a lot of people have a real skewed idea of, of what the top 5% of this country in terms of, of household income earners are. 
You know, if we're looking at two thousand one dollars, and I recognize that was a long time ago. I graduated in two thousand one, um, but in two thousand one, you know, if you were making over twenty five thousand dollars household income a year, you're top five percent. All right, and these numbers still hold relative uh, validity to to today's world. Um, I mean, their numbers are going to be a little bit different, but it's not too much different. Um, you know, it, it, it's amazing to think that. On a double teacher income, you know, our household income puts the Montesini comfortably in the fifth based off of this chart, um, which means, man, there's a lot of people not making a lot of money, but you can figure out how you want to play the economic game shortly. Um, so, man, 25 minutes. Holy cow. I got to move. Um... See what else we got. I'm just gonna keep rolling. I don't care about timers. Um, <clears throat> now, 80, 84. Um, does Reagan look good for re-election? Of course he does. Look at that landslide. That's a runaway landslide. Um, and to the point where I almost don't even want to talk about it. However, since we did talk about uh, Schlafly, um, I do want to talk, you know, about this this election of of eighty four because we see stuff happening in the world of women, all right? Um, take a look here, okay? Um, Democrats, they're gonna run with with uh, their boy Mondale here, um, and they're gonna pair him up with Gina, all right? Um, Ferraro here, first uh, woman in, in a hot minute, all right? And this almost is like a counter move to the, the, uh, the, the, the Schlafly movement going on for women, all right? Um, you know, and it's a strong move to, to play in 84. Um, however, the, the Republicans are going to respond by putting this woman, Sandra Day O'Connor. She's been in our room the whole year. She's up on the board or up on that, that wall of people somewhere. You'll have to look next time you're in the room. But but Sandy here is going to be the first woman on the Supreme Court, um, and so you know there's there's that movement, um, kind of a little tick for tech women's uh, action going on um, through there. Okay, but we can see, man, it's a total landslide. People love Reagan, um, and and yeah, man, the great the guy's a great speaker. Um, he gets reelected, and and really, man, the rest of of this lecture is all on Cold War and scandals. Um, you know, we have, have got this, this issue with communism, um, and, and, and we've got to keep it out. You know, we saw communism come to, to, to the Western hemisphere with Cuba and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to keep it out. Okay. We're trying to keep communism out. Um, and, and. Yeah, you know, here it is. Pops right up in Nicaragua. Okay, uh, pops up in Nicaragua. You can see uh, who the uh, Sandinista uh, government and and the Contra movement Sandinistas. Uh, remember, we've talked about the Sandinistas. Um, we talked about the Sandinistas back what William Walker back in in before Civil War days. He was down there in Nicaragua trying to turn Nicaragua into a into a slave state. All right, you guys remember that? Cool. Um, now they've been beefing with us ever since, ever since. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the Contras, all right, is the rebel group fighting the Sandinistas. Now U S Congress, Congress has prohibited. They passed, the, they passed legislation saying that the United States could not help the Contras in Nicaragua because even though we can see Reagan, man, he wants to end communism everywhere. And he's got a cool t-shirt that says it. Um, but we can't help the, uh, the Contras because they sell drugs and kidnap people to, to fund their exploits. Okay. And, and, you know, we've got, you know, again, in this, the pendulum swinging back into the conservative world, we've got this idea that, that, that we've got to be morally justified in everything that we do and drugs Drugs are bad, okay? So, since they sell drugs, since they kidnap people, we can't play with them. Sounds like the perfect operative for the CIA. All right? Now, um, what we're going to do, okay? What we're going to do, um, over here, we've got the Soviet Union there in yellow. Uh, Iran, 
do I have to jump over? No, Iran's that big country right there. Okay. Um, I think I, I'm looking at it backwards, but whatever. Um, yeah. Iran, they've been having their own problems with, with the Soviet Union. Are we supposed to play nice with Iran? Mm -mm. They took us hostage. Um, they booted out the Shah. They're all like Islamic Republic of Iran, and that doesn't mesh well with, with our moral high ground stuff. All right. So what we're going to see here is is we are going to sell weapons to Iran. Okay, we are going to secretly sell weapons to Iran uh, so that they can fend off the Soviet Union on their northern border. Okay, now we can't just take all this money and bring it back and go bloop, drop it into the U.S. economy and be like, hooray, because then people are going to ask questions. So what we do is we take the money from the from the weapon sales to the Iranians and we give them to the Contras. The Contras then turn around and knock on our door and go, hey, yo, we got a bunch of cash. Can we buy weapons? We know that you can't just give us stuff but capitalism says you'll sell anything to anybody and so we do all right now um all this is supposed to be nice and quiet um you know it's it's all covert ops it's it's all kinds of illegal um and and the public's gonna find out about this stuff okay public's gonna find out about this stuff um and and man people's faith in the country it's it's in, in government is shaken again um i mean the last republican we had in office was was well ford but you know nixon and ford nixon did nothing to, to to help out how we the american people felt about the federal government and now you got reagan who was man everybody wanted to love reagan um and now he's in hot water Okay. Now the difference between Reagan and, and Nixon is he understands he being Reagan understands plausible deniability and plausible deniability is going to come in the form of Oliver North. Okay. Oliver North. Um, you know, a lot of people start falling around Nixon. Um, and then it gets to Oliver North and Oliver North says, I was authorized to do everything that I did. And they said, by who? He goes, yo, it doesn't matter. I was authorized to do exactly what I did. And you don't need to worry about it because I'm the fall guy. So he took the fall. Now, let's let's kind of push forward a little bit and, and understand how all this works. Who is Reagan's VP? Bush won, all right? Ollie North's going to go to jail, okay? He's going to go to prison for this. If we can see if you already didn't read the, the title. Um, as soon as, as Bush 1 becomes president, Ollie North's going to get his pardon. So, yeah, man, it's, it's scandals, but people aren't looking at it because the economy's doing well, all right? They're doing real well, and, and, and life is good. Now, um... Oh my gosh, this is the best stuff in the world, man. This is the best stuff. Um, this really is the best stuff. The Strategic Defense Initiative, all right? Um, man, if, if this doesn't make you love Ronald Reagan um, or just love the absolute absurdity that is the American public, um, you know, Star Wars is it, man. Um, SDI, it's great. Um, it is the Strategic Defense Initiative and... and Basically, Reagan comes out and says, yo, um, we're going to defeat the communists from space. Um, and, and it's all very real and it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, you know, the, I'm going to try to talk and, and capture this. I should have already had this set up, but you know how I function people. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, man, we are, are are going to take this and 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 go to space with with the idea of of uh, nuclear holocaust. Check us out.
first response. Space-based kinetic energy weapons fire high-speed projectiles from hypervelocity guns. Kinetic energy. Intercepting enemy missiles as they are boosted through the atmosphere. Popped up into space. Earth-based nuclear-powered X-ray lasers X -ray fire lasers. their radioactive rays. Attack rays from land-based Exomer lasers Exomer are directed by huge lasers. mirrors orbiting in space. Chemical lasers fire Chemical lasers. burn through the shell of the onrushing missile. Particle beam weapons Particle beam weapons join the attack. Still over the atmosphere, the missile bus ejects its cargo. Multiple nuclear... Okay, time. I do have to, to pause. Salt, okay? We saw that. It's not a term, but salt. One of the things that we're going to do with salt is is limit MIRVs, okay? I think I talked about MIRVs earlier. It's M-I-R-V. Um, basically, they are nuclear shotguns. One ICBM, I'll use this, goes up, and then as it comes back, the top flips open, and it's got a whole bunch of go, pew, 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 pew. All right, so uh, I think I called it in class, like uh, a nuclear shotgun, but that's what we got. And, and oh, by the way, go back to, uh, I believe we were at six different types of weapons. Your warheads. And yes, this and is the Soviet missiles now arc towards the U.S. Ground-based projectiles are volleyed into space. Their giant steel ribs shatter the enemy weapons. Rebar. The final minute. The surviving warheads enter the atmosphere above the United States. Are attacked by laser-equipped planes. Lasers on planes. Lasers and ABM rockets eliminate the last warheads. That's right. Administration's original claim for the Strategic Defense Initiative was that it would be a perfect defense. A perfect defense. Um, yeah, man. So we're going to defeat communism from space. That's how the act. Um, a lot of people commonly call it Star Wars uh, for obvious reasons. Um, remember, Reagan's a movie star, man. Guess what movie's out? Yeah, it's Star Wars. And some people think, oh, it's possible, you know, the Death Star. He's also using a tremendous amount of bellicose rhetoric. He's calling in the evil empire. He's doing all these things. He, he, he's, he's crafting symbols and, and, and he's getting the Soviet Union to believe that this is real. In fact, a lot of Americans thought this stuff was real. Um, you know, you know, go hit pause. Go, go talk to your parents. Ask them if S SDI was real. And they're gonna be like, "Oh, Star Wars? Oh, I wonder what it heard of it. You know, Space Force now." You know, okay, Karen. Um, by the way, I kind of think that like that old Phyllis Schlafly. That's Karen's mom. All right. So, you know, I wouldn't put that in an essay, but <laughs> if you say it, you might get somebody to chuckle. Um, anyway, um, yeah, man, this this SDI would be huge, and and it would bring down. Uh, well, it would cause the Soviet Union to try to spend money that they don't have to keep up with us. Um, and that's going to be a, a, a big effect in, in crippling the Soviet Empire. All right. Now, Soviet Union is on the struggle bus. Um, we have have ramped up more competition in terms of, of space race stuff. Um, we have continued uh, to, 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 to run this this game of you, we got to stockpile weapons and they cost a lot of money. Um and, and, and the Soviet Union has got to keep up. Um, and all, you know, the Soviet Union, man, it's huge. It's huge. It, it's covering a bunch of different ethnic groups um, that don't necessarily get, get along. Um, they're in a 10 year long war. Uh, they got problems, all right? They got problems. Um, and, and we're going to see the beginning of the end for, for the Soviet Union, all right? This guy, Gorbachev. Okay, Gorbachev, um, he is going to be the steward, so to speak, of, of the collapse of the Soviet Union as we know it. Okay, um, and you can stop and you can, you know, read and do all that stuff there. But the big things that I want to talk to you about are Glasnost and Perestroika. All right, right down there. Glasnost and Perestroika. Um, Glasnost and Perestroika. Um, are, 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 are two different things. Um, Glasnost, openness, okay? Um, it, it, it's an openness of government. Uh, the Soviet oligarchy, as it was, 
was basically doing whatever they wanted and and the people had no voice and 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 so what we're going to see is this period of glasnost uh where it's this openness it, it, it the 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 soviet government becomes i don't want to say transparent but they do begin to reveal their hand a little bit about how how their decision making process is going um at the same time you've also got perestroika okay um and as it says there perestroika is is really the restructuring of the soviet society um it's going to begin where they're going to to release the satellite states um to their to their own autonomy okay um and so that stuff's going to be big um we're not really going to get the full disintegration of of the soviet union until uh we really get in with with bush one which will Man, I don't know. You can either read or it'll be another lecture. Um, but, you know, that's really what we've got going on during the Reagan years. Um, the last thing that I want to to hit you with, uh, with, you know, really it's kind of more 80s than it is just Reagan. Um, but but it's style, it's technology, it's, it's, it's society and how people are dressing and behaving. You've got the emergence of yuppies all right yuppies aren't just rich white kids um in the 80s it was young urban professionals it was an acronym and and you can see how the yuppie was supposed to dress um in terms of technology you know we got a personal computer that you don't have to have air conditioning of course everybody's got ac at this point but you know that's the real stuff man take it from an 80s kid man it, it this it was either green or it was orange um, but it gave you some of the best games, um, Oregon Trail, uh, Dino Park Tycoon, uh, Minesweeper, yo, like, don't even at me with that stuff, you know, I will crush all you children in all those games, oh, and by the way, that's your, that's like your OG cell phone, um, but, you know, we, we think a cell phone's put in our pockets, this is what we called a car phone, that thing did not leave the car, and don't even get me on text, um, you know, I remember talking on the phone as a kid, and like, every, like, minute, Every minute on my cell phone, and by the way, yeah, my cell phone was actually, I think, probably larger than that when I was in high school. But every minute you'd hear like a beeping tone uh, because it charged you by the minute. Um, and it was crazy. Like, like, I mean, it was crazy how much how much they charge you. And then don't even think about sex because you're paying like, you know, almost a dollar for every icon, you know, for every letter that you use. Um, but... You know, it, it's getting us, us closer to where we're at today. Um, and you can see the yuppies and they're all driving their Porsches and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's it, man. Um, that's your 1980s. Um, and it's all kinds of weird and, 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 and groovy and fun and created greatness. But yeah, um, make sure that you guys are doing your work. Uh, there is... You know, potentially some incredible changes to the AP exam this year because of COVID. Um, I'm not going to drop that on you right now. I'm sure you guys have all heard rumors. Um, and you know how I feel about rumors. I'm going to wait till I get some actual hardcore facts um, to drop on you, Jack, uh, before I, I let you know. But uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be weird and it's going to be all kinds of different. I hope you guys are having a good break. Um, if you need anything, holler at me. Um, use Remind. Use you know, all the comments, the likes, subscribe. You know, you can DM me on you know a lot of different things, including my email. So um, to everybody who stayed with me through this whole really really long video, I appreciate it. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day.